What's up, everyone? And welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. Extremely excited about today's guest, Marco Calicia. Did I pronounce your name correctly, Marco? Your Calicia. Calicia. Yeah, it's Calicia, but it's fine. He's the founder of Maze Community, which is a marketing agency for blockchain and cryptocurrency projects. So actually, Marco and I met at the blockchain cruise in Barcelona, uh, September 2018, time flies. And ever since, uh, you know, we've been, uh, well, continuing our conversation about marketing, since I'm also a digital marketer, and also talking about the evolution that's been happening in the blockchain space. Uh, obviously, with the overall blockchain uh, startup scene evolving and maturing, it's been really interesting to go from sort of the ICO days uh, and now have sort of a more matured market where we're looking at venture capital coming in and whatnot. So that's why I wanted to bring Marco to talk about his experience and some of the transitions that he's seen in the space. So Marco, thanks for joining us today. I'm super excited to have you here. Thank you for your time. I'm also excited to be here. Finally, it's taken like a few weeks for us to yes. get this going, right? <laughs> That's finally happening. So, Marco, I mean, you've yes. been in the blockchain crypto space in the very early days, um, and you had the opportunity to work on different projects in the very early days. So, now that we are in 2019 and there's been quite of an evolution, what are some of the biggest things that have changed for you in the landscape? Um, I would say definitely uh, not as many projects as we used to work on. So when I initially started, uh, when I initially got myself involved in crypto, it was when Ether was $7. And back then, you know, I got introduced to it through some friends that wanted to start mining uh, Ethereum. Uh, and, the, you know, the, the fact that there was no hype, uh, we didn't have such to an expectation of where it was going to be so we saw the whole like up and down uh, and then when i joined uh the part of kind of the community management working with icos in 2017 again i i started at a, at a point where icos were just kind of beginning to get that that trendy name of icos you know everyone's going ico um so it was it, it was a an interesting journey, like uh, how we started off, you know, managing one project and then all of a sudden I started getting approached uh, by so many other projects. Uh, but from from that day, you know, end of seven, 2017, all the way through 2018, where we then saw the crash and all ICOs kind of dropped out. And today we just don't see that many projects going into ICO. We see more STOs. We see, now we're seeing also IOs. So to answer your question, 2019, what, what are we seeing today? It's definitely projects that are still wanting to sell their token. So they're doing an IEO. We don't see that many ICOs, maybe more in Asia uh, than in our part of the world and you know, in the US or myself in Europe. So they do see a lot of ICOs still there, still there in Asia. But what we're seeing now is a lot of projects having blockchain and a utility token within the wallet and they're not selling it outside. And the reason being is that, you know, they, they just don't feel that they will raise uh, with a public sale, but also the fact that there is a lot of security problems, uh, you know, there's a securities aspect problem to it. So if you start selling something within uh, an ICO, it could happen that you might infringe the securities law. So we're also seeing a lot of people being more adamant towards uh, the legal right, you know, the, 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 the regulations around blockchain and uh, it's becoming more mature for sure it's becoming more mature so i'm sure that as uh i'm sure that essentially what happened is that your job is probably evolving as well in which 
uh, since you had to deal with sort of a lot of ICO raising and whatnot, and now, like we mentioned, the fact that there's other kind of projects or there's other kinds of projects, uh, how is it essentially affecting uh, the brands that are you coming in and, and how are you helping them with growing their community now? Good question. I mean, it, it's definitely become much harder, uh, but also much more interesting for me because initially, you know, when I started doing, uh, let's say, advising ICOs, uh, being more on the community management side, all we had to do was approach a project and ask them if we could manage and set up their telegrams, do bounties, do airdrops. Right now, bounties don't really exist anymore, so you can remove that service. Uh, airdrops, very small. Uh, again, projects are doing airdrops maybe mainly to engage uh, their users. So that's not selling as we used to. And the community management aspect, there's so many community managers right now on the market and it's, it's become a uh, very uh, competitive space uh, and everyone's become, let's say, educated on blockchain. So finding community managers wasn't like when we started. When we started, you know, we were kind of the leading company. This is what we did. Right now, I'm, I'm an advisor. I mean, and I mean like an actual business strategy advisor. I, I try and understand the scope of the project, what they're trying to achieve in their market, in their industry, and what what would fit best, like how the token would be really structured for them. So I take on board a project and I sit down with the founders from day one and actually walk them through the whole setup of the project, even write the white paper for them, or I get my team to do it. Uh, and at the same time, we walk them through the whole like strategy. So it's, it's no longer just, you know, let's manage your channel it's actually like i have a stake in the game i actually get a percentage in the project now so i'm all, i'm also i also become an equity stakeholder uh, of these projects yeah so i mean it's really interesting because essentially we've seen and the overall ecosystem go from sort of the wild wild west which it still has some components of it but now we're moving more in sort of like a startup mindset where individuals are trying to raise capital uh, they have to go through all the different legal checks, respective of their country as well, for the most part, and ensuring that when they're doing acquisition of new customers, that uh, they're doing it the right way. So also part of your job or part of our jobs as marketers, I'm sure, uh, as well as like dealing with the fact that mass adoption has slowed down tremendously. So what are some of the things that current projects are doing to uh, deal with the following? So in terms of like raising uh, as if they were, are a startup, it's true, right? Right now, uh, a lot of people spend days, weeks, actually creating a term sheet to raise funds. Before we just, you know, we used to raise just by uh, going out to the public, doing some marketing, uh, uh, listing it on ICO bench, and all of a sudden, like people would, would come and join the community. Right now, we actually, you know, projects really have to sit down and granularly creates a term sheet with all the right components with all the right terms with all the right uh, uh, agreements you know how how are you going to lock this up what kind of equity stake so it's it's really really become like fine line uh, VC kind of like SAFT agreements you know so this is what a lot of projects are doing and it's become complicated uh, for for them to raise uh, it's I'm not saying that it's harder than before uh, when it comes to like private sales, because I think private sales haven't changed. Uh, private sales are, have always been kind of uh, the hard way to raise funds in, in blockchain. But I think it's the right way to do it because now you're finding investors that actually believe in your project and they become investor advisors. They, they actually, you know, you, you start finding out who, exa who exactly is, is, is your valuable person that's going to invest in your project and take it forth to the point where they actually position you to the next uh, the next uh, roadmap, you know, the next phase of your project. They don't just invest and like, okay, here's your money. There you go. No, they actually come on board because they, they, they're a valuable asset to your project. So uh, that's, that's kind of where we are now with, with the raising point. In terms of um, uh, your question about uh, the marketing strategies, uh, it's, it, it, we still see a lot of people using all the channels, you know, Telegram, Reddit, uh, uh, to push to push all their content PR so uh, as well as events but people don't pay to go to events anymore because in the past year they've just been let down you know they expected to receive investors at events and they don't 
So for example, like myself, you know, when I just came from Davos now, it was myself and maybe like three, four people like myself in the space that we really value our clients and we bring our clients to the events with us and we sit down with them and the, and the investors and we make, like we sit down and actually brainstorm with, with, with these projects how exactly uh, they should be positioning the, themselves to investors. So it, it's, it's, the marketing has become more of business development. So let's put it this way. Like they have to really look for a person or people who will bring them to the right uh, partners, to the right market, to the right audience. Uh, so it's, it's, it's become much more exclusive. Uh, so, I, you know, projects can't come and just, we have the best product, uh, we're doing this kind of project, we're, we're tokenizing this, we, we, you know, it's just another blockchain project. It's, it just won't sell. They, they need a person who understands the space and is able to connect them to the right person. Uh, that's, that's where I see the value. It's, uh, and right now it's, it's great because there's a lot of us, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of good uh, consultants out there that are able to drive these projects forward. So something else that I'd love to, your opinion about is uh, kind of like the difference, because you said you just came back uh, from Cabos, like of what are some of the difference between projects in Asia versus projects in the West? And what can we sort of learn from one another? Projects in Asia are still really following this ICO, IEO, or this new IEO, this initial exchange offering path. So they, they're still depending on the public community uh, so, you know, they don't have the best concept in the project, but they're still able to raise millions. And that's because Asia is the biggest investors in, in blockchain. They, they just want to keep pushing this, the, this industry forward, this, you know, uh, this whole space forward. So they really value the, the blockchain industry. And, you know, the fact that we just came back from Davos, we met from, with the people who came from China and they said, look, if you go to uh, Hainan and you go to Shenzhen and you go to Beijing, people really are pushing blockchain. They really value blockchain. So they don't really sit and uh, let's say like uh, pick piece by piece out of a white paper. What is the selling point when they're investing? They just invest because it's blockchain. Whereas in the West, <laughs> we've become so uh, the, not demoralized, disappointed by how many scammy projects there are, like how, Un, uh, unvaluable these white papers are towards like the selling point of this project and we just don't want any more of this we don't you know we don't want to just see blockchain we don't want to just uh, a company comes to us and like markets us again blockchain like we want to see something that is changing the future you know it's we're investing in in projects that really make things streamlined so it doesn't matter if we focus on enterprise or on banks or uh, on governments or you know the fact that we are covering governance and encrypted and security and uh, uh, streamlining payment systems of uh, you know, cross-border payments. This is what we want to see. So this is what we want to invest in. This is what we want to actually push towards because in Europe, we have much more business development, technology houses, legal. We have the right component to understand the, what, where blockchain should be going. It, it's just, uh, I think we have, we have been this past two years has, has just let us down so much that it's, it needs to get, get back to growth. And I saw it right now with Kraken delisting uh, Bitcoin SV. It's now from the wild, wild west, it's shifted to the wild, wild east. <laughs> My next question to you is, what would be your recommendation for projects that are currently in the market? Um, what are some of the steps that they should take into consideration when they're looking into building their community, especially because the space has tremendously changed since just a year ago? Uh, I mean, the steps to building a community, I would say it's, uh, I mean, it's a complicated, it's, it's really complicated right now to, to focus on building a community. It, I, I want to like kind of change this question. It's like, how do you engage your community or how do you position your, your product to the market right now? And I would say the best way to do it is to onboard partners that already have communities. Uh, that's probably the best way you, you have to, it's you, like you could do an airdrop, but then you need a utility token and we're seeing more and more projects go towards security tokens. So it does, doesn't really work anymore. So when it comes to like building your community, again, you still need to push a lot the social media management. You have to create very valuable content. 
uh, onboard influencers in your space. But more than anything, you need those brand ambassadors. You need people that really value your project, uh, that, that bring the industry with them. So it's not just, you know, let's onboard advisors, the best, you know, whatever, advisors that are ICO experts and a good team and a good product. No, you actually need to bring someone from your industry that really values your project. And this, this person needs to have some kind of presence. They need to go out and speak for the, for the project. Uh, you know, so you have to find people that have already succeeded in that industry. So right now I'm seeing more and more projects that are actually like that, that the people who are running the projects have successfully done something before in that industry. So, you know, it's what, what are you doing as a founder to uh, bring what you're developing to the industry that you're targeting? Uh, are you are you solving something? Are you including these these companies uh, that you're trying to transform? Like they say, disrupt. I don't like using disrupt, but transform that industry. Are you working very close with them? Because at the end of the day, all these projects, what they're trying to do is raise money. So if they want to raise money to release the product, they don't have to focus on the community. It's good to have content. It's good to uh, keep building a steady uh, community as you build the content and, and the marketing and you go out there and you pitch and you speak to investors. But what they really need to focus on is having people in the team that are super passionate about the product that are brand ambassadors of the product. They, they understand the industry, they understand the market and they go out and actually position the, the, this product in the market. Uh, so offline communities are much stronger than online. So doing like workshops, for example, really work. Incubating something really works. Uh, so we see this with, with a few leading projects right now. They go out and incubate. They go out and create their own little meetups and their own workshops. So definitely, I think projects should be focusing more, uh, shifting towards uh, brand ambassadors, uh, offline communities, and also cr cross uh, promos. So trying to uh, include other communities in, in, uh, in their space. So any projects you're currently excited about? I'm working on two of them. So Go Mama, which it's a, we're doing cross-border payments uh, from the U.S. to Latin America using Stellar. Uh, this is a $70 billion, uh, not you know, industry, I mean, we process $70 billion in, in cross-border payments from the U.S. to Latin America. And I think this is really strong. There's a strong team behind it. We have the support from Stellar behind us uh, who are supporting us with the development. Uh, and again, we're trying to um, trying to bank the unbanked in, in Latin America, which is, uh, you know, a 400 million population uh, that, that are, you know, right now they're using something like Western Union or, or, or PayPal, Zoom, uh, which is like uh, Zoom is, is, is part of PayPal's uh, payment system. Uh, it's, it's, and, you know, it's, it's expensive. It's, uh, it takes a lot of time to process. And also you have to go pick it up from a store, whereas we want it to reach right into their hands. We want to become kind of like the WeChat for South America, if that makes sense, uh, or the WePay, you know, not the mm -hmm. WeChat, but the WePay with, with having different components where you can pay utilities and, uh, and also have the community aspect where we, we will give back to the community, uh, let's say a certain percent at the end of every month. So we see a, also a social impact. Um, that's one project that I'm really uh, focusing on Sounds right now. Sounds exciting. Uh, yeah. Another one is an affiliate marketing product, which again, the affiliate uh, industry is, a uh, $300 billion industry uh, where a lot of companies are, are using affiliates to sell their products, uh, you know, like the multi-level marketing uh, kind of selling, but they don't, they have solutions that are really expensive right now. It's again, really slow in, in processing and they're not transparent. So people don't know if, you know, if actually, com if companies are being honest to them about how much th they've sold. Uh, so we want to be more transparent. Uh, so that's another project that I'm uh, currently working on. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to start my own project, which is uh, kind of giving back to the community. So doing, uh, uh, getting the community to really promote projects and incentivizing them and uh, compensating them using crypto, which, you know, I've been doing for the past two years at, uh, at Mazi. You know, we, we've given out $500,000 to the community managers to promote our clients. And it works it works amazing you know it's uh, they, they they're really engaged they really love the projects and i think there is so many people out there in the crypto industry and off crypto that believe in projects you know they believe in they they're passionate about 
a brand or uh, you know any project that's out there a startup where they go out out of their way and, and they talk about it they spend time and I think these people need to be compensated and we don't have such a system right now we don't have a way to compensate people I, I think that's where Facebook is going but I'm not really sure if that's where they're going with their with their point but that something that I really want to start focusing on as well and you know I'm writing a book like starting to write a book about this proof of community uh, and also I want to run a project on a stable coin to to compensate the community for the efforts that they do for the projects that they represent or they support. No most definitely that's such a valid point and I think uh, you definitely feel it within influencers community especially uh, I feel like there's been such an interesting backslash that's happening from major youtubers who've come out and said that uh, you know, explain how much work it is to maintain a community and, and being really active on YouTube and YouTube like throughout the years is uh, sort of stripped away their compensations. And I think for me personally, that's what got me into blockchain, uh, just because I've come from a background of doing content and producing content. And you're absolutely right. It's, it's like finding a sort of equilibrium, right, Bef between sort of like brands or profiting from that. And then content makers, you do spend so much time uh, building their community and uh, creating content. So I'm excited. Cool. So where can we find you on social media yeah. and which conference are you going to next? I'll be in consensus May, nice. what is it? May 10th. So yep. hopefully seeing you there. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be in consensus then in Malta for the Malta blockchain summit. And I'm also running a marketing, uh, so I'm running a marketing workshop in, uh, in Malta, like a community nice. marketing workshop. So if people will be there, then be happy to meet them. And uh, well, people where they where they can follow me, Instagram. Uh, I guess you can write it down, Crowley Marco. Telegram, Marco Mazi. Uh, Facebook, just search for my name. And uh, LinkedIn. You know, although I have like four thousand plus connections, so it's like I don't really I don't really check it that much anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to include all that for you guys in the blog post. So uh, perfect. All information. Awesome. Well, thank you, Marco, for taking the time to speak to me today. Thank you for dropping thank all your you. knowledge. <laughs> yep. Thank you for your time. All right. Take care, guys. And soon. make sure to subscribe to That Crypto Hustle on iTunes, Stitchers, or YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.